Hello everyone, and I would like to welcome you again to this week's Friday Reflections. I'm Pastor Scott, one of the pastors at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lilburn, Georgia, and I appreciate you taking time to join me. I'm coming to you today from the pulpit, as this is Labor Day weekend, and I was trying to think, where do I do a lot of my labor? Well, from right here, behind the pulpit. Um, giving sermons, very obviously preparing sermons, it's a large part of the labor um, that I get the privilege to do on your behalf. So I do want to wish all of you a happy Labor Day weekend. May it be a safe and fun weekend for all involved. Just a reminder, this Sunday right now, we are planned for one outdoor joint service where we can all gather together at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. So again, one service, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning is an opportunity for us to gather together. And please make sure to watch the rest of the announcements and the website. Lots of things starting up now that we're into September. Um, starting on September 12th, our Sunday school will be meeting in between our 8.30 and 11 o'clock worship services. Also, last night we started our Wednesday night program, which includes a worship from 6.45 to about 7.15ish. And then we break up into groups with confirmation kids, high school kids, and adults. But all people are invited to come. Um, if you just want to come to the worship, that's fine. Or you just want to come to the, the discussion afterward, that's fine too. We start that about 7.30, right around there, 7.20, 7.30. Um, but it was, it was a fun evening. We had a, a good number of folks here, and the kids did a great job of leading the service. And I know they worked hard at the music and the skits and the reading. So really excited about that moving forward as well. That is a mass service, so if you come, mass will be required for that. Speaking of Labor Day, I don't know if you really know what Labor Day is. I really didn't, so I did a little research, and of course, the place to go is Wikipedia to hear what Labor Day is. So I'm just going to read a little bit about what it is. You can read further if you would like on your own. Um, obviously, Labor Day is a federal holiday in the United States, um, celebrated on the first Monday in September, okay? And it's done to honor and recognize the American labor movement and the works and contributions of laborers to the development and the achievements of our country, the United States. Uh, beginning in the late 19th century, this has been around a while, as trade, as trade unions and labor movements grew, trade unionists proposed that a day be set aside to celebrate labor. Labor Day was promoted by the Central Labor Union and the Knights of Labor, which organized the first parade in New York City. In 1887, Oregon was the first state of the United States to make it an official public holiday. By the time it became an official federal holiday in 1894, 30 states of the United States officially celebrated Labor Day. So just a little bit of a background there. But you know what struck me was is that um, it was to honor and recognize the American labor movement. But more importantly for me, the works and contributions of laborers to the development and achievements of our country. And when I heard that, I got to thinking, you know, I think most of us want to feel as though we're contributing to something. I know I do. When I do something, I want to feel like I'm contributing to something or it's going to matter in some way. And I think most of us, if we're, if we're honest, that, you know, even if we like to make money and we like to have things and we like to be successful, that there's that part of us that, that always wants to feel like we're also making a contribution to something bigger and you know sort of broader than just our own little world like we're making a contribution to the greater good and i think that is in all of us and it's something that on labor day we can celebrate and remember you know i was thinking several years ago when i was new in ministry i went to a conference and there was a pastor speaking there and he said something that i will always remember and you'll hear me say this from time to time and he was talking to us and he said, you know, most of us spend the first part of our lives working to be successful. And then he said, but we spend the second part of our lives working to be significant. Let me say that again. We spend the first part of our lives working to be successful and the second part of our lives working to be significant. And I have found that true in my own life. When I first started out in ministry, it was about, you know, numbers and how many people I get there and and meeting the budget and just, you know, it was all about success. But as time went on, I realized that it isn't all about numbers. 
It isn't all about dollars. It isn't all about success. It's about what significance or what difference does this make? And anymore, when I go to do something, I'll find myself asking, you know, well, what difference could this make? Or what significant, you know, change could this, you know, provide for, for people or for the church? Because I think, again, you know, as we grow older, we do get wiser and we see things in different ways and different perspectives. But I think all of us, at no matter what age we are, from very little all the way up to very old, just, just want to feel like what we do makes a difference and makes an impact. And I think when we find those things, when we find those ways that we can make an impact, whether that's through our labor or whether that's through volunteer work or whether that's, you know, at school, however that is, it doesn't have to necessarily be a job. However that is, is that's where we find real true enrichment in our lives. I was reminded of a, of a very interesting little parable that Jesus told in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 28 to 33, that we hear once in a while, but it's, it's one of those that's sort of like, what does Jesus mean by that? So here, is, here it is. It says, what do you think? Jesus says, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first son and said to him, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second one and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he never went. Now, which of the two, Jesus said, did the will of his father? Well, the people there answered, of course, the first. And Jesus then said to them, very truly I tell you, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, they're going into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Now, a little background here to help understand this is Jesus is likely talking to the religious leaders of his day. Those who, who basically portrayed themselves as doing the work of God, but actually were doing very little other than what they wanted to do to accomplish their own purposes or what benefited them. They really weren't contributing to the good of society. They were, if anything, they were contributing to a gap between the people you know, that were righteous and then those that were many times considered unrighteous or out of the reach of God. And Jesus recognizes rising this came along and the people that many times were considered unclean or untouchable were attracted to Jesus because he gave them purpose. He gave them meaning. In other words, he gave them opportunity to feel like they were contributing to something bigger than themselves. And it was those folks that tended to be the most open to Jesus. You know, the folks that were sort of set in their ways and just sort of were, you know, going through the motions and, and everything, you know, sort of benefited them and they were working the system that worked for them. They really weren't contributing to anything. They really weren't helping anything. But these other people that were now coming to follow Jesus were starting to change the world. And I think that's really the challenge before us is how are we contributing? How are we using the, the gifts that God has given us? our spiritual gifts, our financial gifts, our gifts of, of time and experience and wisdom, how are we using those to contribute to the greater good? Or are we just sort of keeping them and using them for ourselves? And what Jesus reminds us here is that when we are open to him and we utilize those things that God gives us and blesses us with, not only for our own benefit, but obviously they're there for our own benefit, for our own edification and joy, but also for the greater good and for the, the contribution to others and, and, and to the wider communities and to our congregation. He says, that's where you'll really find life. So Labor Day was started to recognize these efforts and the contributions that laborers were making to the country and its success and welfare. And we too celebrate the gifts that God has given us, the spiritual gifts, the time, or, or the talents that God has given us, the time, you know, um, the experience that God has given us, of course, our, our financial and other resources, we give thanks for those. Not just so that we can use them for ourselves and have them you know, our way, but so that we can also have the opportunity to be enriched by contributing to the larger society and to the good of other people. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Labor Day, we give you thanks for the many and various ways in which you call us to work in your kingdom. Dear Lord, like we hear today with the two sons, 
even if we might be resistant, even if we might not know what to do, help us to be open to going to work in your kingdom. Open our hearts to the ways in which you enrich our lives, not just for our own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. So that as we share of the bounty you have given us, we find true life. Keep us safe this weekend. Bring us fun and enjoyment and refreshment from our labors. But most of all, dear Lord, help us to remember that when we contribute to the larger good, that is where we find life and find it abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, folks, have a great weekend. Um, one service Sunday at 930. We hope to see you soon. Have a good holiday.